Okay, today's video is entitled Solving Systems of Linear Equations by Elimination. Because I'm currently teaching math in Berlin, Germany, in German, this is called the Additionsverfahren or the Addition Method. And here we have two linear equations. This is the equation for a line. This is the equation for a line. And what we're going to do when we solve these equations is we are going to find the single x and y coordinates, the pair, the single pair of x and y coordinates that are a solution for both of these equations. And in a sense, what we're doing also is because this is a line and this is a line, we're finding the point on the x-y coordinate system where these two lines intersect. That is the single point that will be the solution for this equation and this equation, and we're going to do that by elimination. Now, what I like to do is write the equation down, write the other equation down, and then I like to just draw a line underneath it, and I'm going to add them up. That's why in German this is called the addition method, because we're going to add them up. In English, it's called the elimination method, because when we add them up, we want to eliminate either the x term or the y terms. Now, I'm going to add them up just the way they are in a sense. Minus x plus 3x is 2x, so that doesn't, I'm having eliminated the, the x values. Add up the y values, plus 7 plus, plus 5, and you get that that would be uh, 12y. So you have not eliminated the y's either. That means we must do something so that the coefficient in front of the y's or in front of the x's is the same number but has the opposite sign. So you can see here I have minus x and here I have 3x. I am simply going to multiply this whole equation by 3 and then I'll have minus 3x and plus 3x and when I add them up I'll get 0. You need to kind of think a little bit ahead of time about how you're going to do this. What can I do to eliminate the x or the y values? Multiply the top equation by 3. If I do that, minus x times 3 is minus 3x. Plus 7 times 3 is plus 21y. 5 times 3 is 15. That is this whole equation, all three terms multiplied by 3. Now, I didn't do anything to the second equation, so I'm simply going to write it down. Now I'm going to add them up, and I'm going to draw another line under there. I'm going to add up the x, the y, and the constant columns. This is minus 3x plus 3x, 0, 21y, or plus 21y, plus, plus 5y is 26y, and 11 and 15 is 26 also. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 26, and I get that y is equal to 1. That is the y value. I need the x value. I'm going to take the y value and plug it into either this equation or this equation and solve that equation for x. This one has this minus sign. This one doesn't have any minus sign, so I'm going to use this equation. So I'm going to write down 3x plus, here's my 3x plus 5y, y is 1, so I take the y out, take it out, and I substitute in the 1 for it, all right, equals 11. All I did was take the y out and put the 1 in. This is 5y, that's 5 times y, so this is 5 times 1, because y is 1. Now I'm going to simplify, 3x plus 5, because 5 times 1 is 5, equals 11. Now I have positive 5, I need to move that to the other side, I'm going to add minus 5 to both sides, draw a line, 3x, this goes to 0 because it's plus 5 plus minus 5, and 11 plus minus 5 is 6. Divide each side by 3, and you get that x equals 2. That means that the solution to each of these equations is the single point 2, comma 1, or x equals 2, y equals 1. That means that this is the point on the x-y coordinate system where these two lines cross. That means that this point lies on this line and this point lies on this line. That means that this point is a solution to this line and this point is also a solution to this line. Okay, now, am I 100% sure of that one? Well, pretty sure, but I'm actually going to check it. I'm going to check to make sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these equations and plug the x and the y coordinates in and see if I get this 
equal sign to be true, that this side equals this side. All right, the first equation is minus x plus 7y equals 5. I'm simply going to plug in. I get minus 2 because this is minus x and x is 2 plus 7, 1, y is 1. And I see that I get minus 2 plus 7 equals 5, and indeed 5 equals 5. So now I know that this point does indeed lie on this line. Well, let's check the other one. 3x plus 5y is 11. Plug in the x and the y values, and you get that 11 equals 11. That means that this point lies on this line, and that means that this point lies on both lines, and that is the place where those two lines intersect, x, 2, y, 1. Okay, let's try the next one. We'll go a little faster since we did one already. Now, here's my two lines again. I'm going to simply draw a line under them, and I'm going to think about adding them up. Maybe, you say, oh, let's just multiply the top equation by 7. Then we'll have minus 7x and 7x. But if you look over here at the y's, you can see I already have minus 5 and I have plus 5. So if I add these equations up just the way they are, I don't need to change anything, then I'll eliminate the y's. So let's do that. Minus x plus 7x is 6x. Minus 5 and plus 5y is 0. And then I'm going to add up the, co the constants, and I get minus 18. Divide each side by 6 and I get that x equals minus 3. Now again, I'm going to plug this, plug this x value into one of these two equations. I think I chose the bottom one. 3, this is 7x, so this is 7 times minus 3 plus 5y equals 1. Simplify, 7 times minus 3 is minus 21 plus 5y equals 1. Now I want to move this term to the other side because I want to solve for y, so I'm going to add the opposite, which is 21, to both sides. The 21's cancel because 1 is minus and 1 is positive. I get 5y equals 20. I divide each side by 5, and I get y equals 4. Now I know that this point, 4, excuse me, minus 3, 4, is a solution for both of these lines. That's where these two lines intersect. Am I sure? Well, let's just do another check. Okay, plug them in again. You get the values, and you get minus 17 equals minus 17. Let's do the same thing for the second equation. Do a check, check it, check it. You get minus 1 equals minus 1. Now I'm pretty confident that this is the place where these two lines intersect. This point lies on this line, this point lies on this line, and this point is a solution for both of those equations. All right, let's do the third one. This is a special case. You can see now I have 6 and 4 and 3 and 2. I have to now actually multiply each equation by something to eliminate the x or y values. Now, the easiest thing to do is, well, you could multiply the top by minus 4 and the bottom, or the top by 4 and the bottom by 6. That would make both of these 24s with opposite signs. I think what I decided to do was multiply the top equation by 2. And if I do that, I can multiply the bottom equation by 3, and then I'll get 6x or minus 6x and plus, no, minus 6y and plus 6y, and then I'll eliminate those two. So the first one, 6x times 2 is 12, minus 3y times 2 is minus 6y, and then 3 times 2 is simply 6. For the bottom equation, minus 4x times 3, minus 12x, 2y times 3, 6y minus 18 equals minus 18, and I'm going to add these up. Now, you'll notice this is a special case. I'm going to eliminate the y's, but in this case, I'm also going to eliminate the x values. Okay, so if I, lim if I add 12 and minus 12, I get 0. If I add minus 6 and plus 6, I get 0, and I get 0 equals minus 12. Now, if you do this and you get eliminate both x and the y values, then that tells you that these two lines have no solution. And that tells you that if they have no solution, that means they don't cross. And the only kind of lines that don't cross are parallel lines. OK? So when you get something weird like this after you've added them together, then that tells you that there's no solution and those are parallel lines. And if I actually solve these equations and put them into, or if I change these equations into the y slope intercept form, you'll notice that each equation has a slope of minus 2, excuse me, a minus 2, of 2. And you can see here they have different intercepts, different y-intercepts, but they have the same slope, and that means they're parallel lines. 
Okay, there you go. There's a couple examples. I'm going to do another video with two more examples in case you want to see some more. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can do one or all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video or simply give me a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.